Hey folks, it's Fritgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Alps Panorama at the Northern Sea here in Farming Simulator 19. It's corrected itself. And it's going off around the outside edge of the field. Now, I, I'm never really very good with this one. Um, oops, no, I want to do that because what I want to do is I want to go on here. I want to increase the turn angle all the way up to 100% like that. Don't want to leave anything else. So I go like that, right there. Turn angle at 100%. He should turn a lot sharper in the field as he's going around. And that's what I want. As long as he turns sharp. So we're just going to watch this one as he goes around the outside edge of the field. Just to see if it's going to actually do it. Because it'll go around the corner in this direction without any problem. But it does try to cut across corners when it's going this way. And it doesn't recognize trees when it does so. Let's have a quick drink. But yeah, because it doesn't recognize the trees, that's where it gets a little bit more difficult. So it's going to come over to there and... Now that's a weird thing that it does. It gets out to that side like that and then decides it's going to turn around. So collision check on is off. Collision check on is on. So if I do collision, I think collision can um, detect connected field only. Pause is off. Change direction off. Wait during unload is on. Turn that off. Uh, manual steering. So I'm not, I'm not, right, I know about the turn modes. It'll either go out in a big circle or it will reverse round in the corner. Um, it's the collision check. As far as I know, collision check only works with, so that one's on. And then I can turn the collision check off like that. As far as I know, collision check only works for other vehicles. It doesn't work for trees. I don't think it does anything else. I'm unsure about the collision check bit, though. But, I mean, the, the rest of it is absolutely fantastic. Now, I did say that I was going to try and do some work with... Oh, hang on. I know what I'll do. Let me just go like that. We'll go back to here, and I'll put that one on like that. There. Because I want to see if it's going to do anything with this tree here. Is it going to collision check that tree? Or is it going to try and do something a little bit weird? Okay, it's going to just pretend the tree doesn't exist completely. So that doesn't really matter. Um, I did say I was going to try course play. Now, I did load up. I tried loading course play. I couldn't even get shop in the mod folder. I've since been helped out with that. And that was fine. So then I put course play onto here. And I came onto it. Uh, I said, no course is loaded. And I went into the menu to try, like, into the, the, the main menu to try and find the keys to bring it up. And I couldn't get the course play thing to come up at all. all right? I, I looked at where it said show HUD and don't show HUD and stuff like that. And nothing was changing. It wasn't doing anything. As, so I, I can't get anything to work with course play. I got, I've, I've actually got it installed and on the game. I mean, I've now since gone and disabled the mod. But I, I could get it to show up at all. There was absolutely no indication that course play was going to work or it's going to do anything. All I had was a little message at the bottom, no course loaded. I thought, well, that's great. That's wonderful. I know there's no course loaded because I've already done that much. But you're not really being helpful because you're not letting me do anything else with it. So, carefully, quietly and calmly, and all collected and, and, and calm and serene and Buddha-like, I um I I I, I um uh, uh, hit the escape key um without any undue force and went and disabled the course play mod and then came back to AI vehicle extension which works. See, look, it's going round the field and it's doing this. Now people have told me I should use course play because course play will just go round the field and it will do it all for me. Well, that's what this one's doing. I've just pressed the button and it's gone. I haven't had to set up a track. I haven't had to set up a load of other stuff. Um. To be honest, I haven't had to do anything. I've literally just come in, press the button, and away it's gone. The only difference with course play is that I can go and use it on the grass fields that aren't currently set as fields, which is what people keep telling me. That's that's kind of like the main reason that I'm like the, the main argument for using it. 
That's the only thing with the AI vehicle extension is that it's doing that. It's coming out and it's, tur it's, it's like stopping after it's gone around the corner. And then it's sort of doing its backing up and being a little bit odd. So I'm not quite sure why it feels the need to do that. I mean, whatever floats its boat, I guess. Oh, that's why it's feeling the need to do that. It's, it's thinking it needs to come out this way and turn a lot sharper than it actually needs to. So I'm going to just watch this a minute. I'm going to allow this, you know, points for trying and everything, and we're, we're going to see what it's doing. What What is, what is the ultimate plan here? It's, so obviously it's missed a bit back there, and then it's come out here, and you know what? I'm not going to allow this. Um, we're, 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 going to, we're going to just cancel that a minute. I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to drop it down. No, I'm not going to drop it down. I'm going to do that again, and this time I'm going to drop it down, and I'm going to actually start the machine up. It's probably a good start. There we go. Right, so we'll get that one there, and then I'm going to back this one around a little bit further, like this. There we go. And I'm going to manually do one little bit of this just to straighten this little tiny bit out. There, I'm going to lower that one down like that. And this time, I'm going to go along here, like this. And it's going to run on the inside of there. Like that. So it's, it's pretty much straight running up through there. That's why I want it like that. So that it's pretty much straight running up through there. And it's going to come out around here, like this. And here is where I'm going to press H. And I'm going to let it carry on. And it's going to do its thing. So... Now the challenger should go on round and we're going to do a second round around the outside of the field. It's going to do a couple of turns on this one. I'm going to bring you up to there and it's not going to finish. So I'm going to watch this one turn right here just, just to make sure that it will turn. Then we're going to go off and we're going to get our truck and we're going to head off into town and get ourselves a few more cattle. I want another 72 Holstein cattle. Um, Holstein cows, we, we're going to build up a big dairy herd. Grass is not a problem. We can get plenty of grass in for them. They should, well, I did say they wouldn't need any food today, but I think they probably will. If we're getting another 70-odd animals, we're most likely going to want a little bit of grass going in for them. This one, for whatever reason, the mod is giving us work particles above it when it's not actually working, which is definitely points against it. I am surprised that this mod is doing that, because this is one of the Horsch DLC ones. Um, and those are pretty well made mod. That, that is a pretty well made mod. So I'm surprised that we're getting the work particles coming off it when it's not actually working. Um... Uh, there we go. It's just a, that's, that's another one of those minor little details that honestly don't really matter. So, Combine can stay there still. You can stay. I don't want you. I don't want you. No, I don't want you. Actually, I'll do what, I'll tell you what I do want to do is I want to have a look on here. And I want to go. So, we've got our corn growing up there. Uh, we've got planted state up there. And it is giving us a bonus level of fertilization over there. So, weeds, we've got to spray off. I'm not going to do that on the grass. I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to touch it. I want to... Yeah, I know what I want to do. I want to go to you right here. This bad boy right here. This is our next task. I'm going to back you up there a little bit. Like that. I'm going to get two more loads. So we, we've been spending a lot of time running up and down the road getting loads of this. And we will eventually stop. Okay. Apparently I am not getting out of here. I need to hug that fence. What I've done wrong is... Oh, no, I did actually manage to do it there, just hugging the fence. That was all right. And then we can come out of here. I don't really want to be coming out this way at all. Because in order to be able to get out of here without hitting any signs at all, I've got to do a lot of shunting. Which I don't really want to do. I mean, yeah, I know I normally would just beat the sign down and say, you know what, we, 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 just just ignore it, just ignore the fact that we're knocking the signs over and, and go for it, but I'm wanting to see if I can do this properly. Just once, I want to be able to do my job properly. So let's see if we can do that. Let's see if Rithgar has what it takes to be an actual lorry driver. I don't think I do, because I haven't gone round the corner properly. 
I'm right up against that. So let's let's turn sharp here. Me near. Right now we got to turn sharp again. I should just try to go around the corner and up against there like that. So we're going to do this with a 7,000 point turn. There, 7,000 point turn. We can do it. Ha <laughs> ha! See, I told you I could do it. Easy, easy as pie. It really is. So next, as I'm coming out on this road, I'm going to have another slight issue, and that is getting onto the other main road down the bottom. That one, well, first of all, can I get across this bridge? I can indeed get across this bridge. Right, well, there's a step in the right direction. Probably don't want to be driving off the side of the road, but I do need to turn right up here. So the, our tractor, the Challenger, he's doing a great job up through there. Once he gets around the rest of that one, we're, we're going to stop him. But this road right here, look. Yeah, we come up to here. And then we've run out of space. This is going the wrong direction. I can't do that. I can go... I can get to here, look, and then I can... I'm going to have to come out round. Then turn sharp. And I should be able to get out round. But I'm, I'm going right off the road. And I've got more signposts out that side. Which means I'm not going to be able to get round all of those signs and make that turn. Now, that one's not a possibility. So, we're going to have to go with option two. And that is go in here and then back out onto the main road. So, obviously, I've got my friend out there on the road and he's doing the backing. He's, he's, he stopped the traffic a minute while I'm backing out onto the road. So, I'm going to back that one up there like that. Now, this is something that I have done. I have backed out onto a big, busy main road. Oop. <laughs> oh, I was so close, I nearly took the sign out. I have backed out onto a big, busy main road many times, actually, in order to be able to actually get onto the road. Because sometimes you literally just cannot drive. It's, well, not that you can't drive. So you, you Literally, you cannot drive forwards. As we already showed right there. It wasn't a possibility. That that wasn't something that was going to happen. Now we've got the whole bit that I really don't like, which is the fact that... Oh, well, if I go right over that side, it's fine, apparently. I'm going to stop there a second. And I'm going to go in this wise direction. And you are stopping when... Bus. Actually, no, that's, that's not a bad thing that it's stopping right there. That's not going to cause me any problems. I am just going to bring it over to here, and I'm going to start that a second. And pull you up to there, like that. And what I'm thinking... 57% hmm, of the load left. If I go and refill, is that going to be enough to finish this field off? I don't think it is. We've got 1,152 litres of grain at the moment on board. So I'm thinking it's probably not enough. What I am going to do instead is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to there. And I'm going to start planting. And I'm not going to use the standard hired help. What I'd like to do is I'd like to you know, keep it like that. I want to use this one. I want to do the up and down. And I'm going to keep it on the AI vehicle extension just to see how it copes with doing this field here. Right, is it going to try and do the turn? Right? It should. Is I think it should start doing the turn right there so it's not going to mess it up. What it will do is it will go up through here and it will go up to that corner and then it will turn around and come back again. But whether it will do the rest, we'll just let it do the go up and come back again. Well, we drive into the animal dealership. And I'm going to turn left down here because I haven't actually done that yet. We've always turned right and we've always followed the town in around that way. So let's go this side. And we'll go around the town in this direction so that we can get our first load of cattle. And come up through there. And no, we're, we're, I, was, I was the reason I just said no was because I was just thinking to myself, I wonder if the grass has grown yet. And then I just remembered, no, it hasn't. And so I thought the first bit and said the second bit. I do this a lot. This is why sometimes my rambling speech can seem a little bit more confusing than normal, even by my standards. And that's because I think part of what I'm saying in my head whilst I'm saying something else and then I finish off what I was saying 
actually by saying it um, and don't remember to put in the bit at the beginning which is then why the rambling speech becomes just sort of incoherent babble of strange noises all connected together in what I hope is something vaguely resembling a sentence but isn't usually. Is anybody following along at this point? I'm, if, if you do understand, I'd, I'd be really grateful if you could sort of explain some of it to me, because I'm probably just as confused as most of you are at this particular point in time. Is it going to do it? Is it going to stop here, and is it going to decide to turn, or is it going to just keep going? Nope. What is he doing? He is stopping right here, right? That's good. I'm really pleased he's doing that, because if it wasn't... Uh, that means that it would go right down to the end of the field. That in itself is not a bad point, but when it becomes an issue is later on, and when it's done that a couple times, the corner becomes a little bit sharper than it otherwise would be, and then it will start turning. And it can lead it to, basically it can lead to the tractor starting on one side of the field and sort of working its way round and ending up working up and down on a completely different side of the field over time. If you don't sort of keep half an eye on it sometimes, if you've got a fairly straight edge on the field, it'll be fine. But if you don't, if you've got like a very curvy field like this one, then it can cause some problems. Now, what exactly are you doing at the moment? Currently, I'm as confused as what this driver appears to be. What are you doing? You've done that where you've literally just turned around on the spot. Now you've come over to here. And you're gonna what? Go for a picnic somewhere? I'm not sure at this point that even the AI vehicle extension knows what it's doing. No, it's just gonna give up. It hasn't actually said I quit. But it did it I, I think it's getting close to saying I quit. So if I uh, I'll start this one again. We'll move back over this side. I come over here like this. Bring you back over there, I think. Now, I want to try and keep this reasonably smooth. It's something to do with that turn there. It, it didn't like it, did it? Um, I didn't think that it would mess it up like that. I did think that it would struggle with it a little bit. So I thought that it was going to cause a problem or two, but I didn't think it would actually mess it up. So I'll let it go to there, and then I will do that. And it's now working. And it should, in theory, go all the way down to the other end of the field this time and turn down there. So I'll leave that go. I'm hoping. Let's go back to you. And you right here, I want to load up some more animals. So we got Limousin, we got Ayrshire, we got Sailor, and we've got Holsteins. Um, some people said that they've never heard them pronounced Holstein before, and it's always pronounced Holstein. I've always heard them pronounced as Holstein. As, um, some, I've, I've, I have heard Holstein before. But not, you know, I've only ever heard it online or from someone that is comes from nowhere near where I am. Um, Holstein has always been kind of the, the, the way that I've always heard it. I've never heard any other um, one in real life. So anyway, Holsteins right here. I, I, I generally will stick to the pronunciation of any animal that um, I deal with using Livestock Trader is full. Okay, and confirm. There we go. I like that the animals have weight. Did you see that? The trailer actually dropped down then. It pressed it down on the suspension. So it's, the animals do actually have a physical weight in the game, which is really good. I like that. That is a very, very strong positive as far as I'm concerned. And I will bring this one over here. We'll, I'll get up onto the bridge again, the, the big bridge going out of town. And then we'll run back and we'll check on our challenger and we'll see how that one's doing. He should be doing okay. Let's see that we won't be. Um, how many have we got in here? It's not telling. Wait a minute. Oh, no, I've got livestock. No, livestock trailer 2.2%. That's something to do with the... 
Didn't I used to have a thing that showed me how many bits and pieces I've got down in that bottom corner? I've, uh, uh, this is something to do with another mod that has now gone and hidden it from view. It's because I've pressed a button somewhere. Somewhere I've gone and pressed a button and it's stopped that from showing. I wonder if it's that. No, it's not that button. That was, I'm, I'm sort of pressing some of the buttons. Hey! It's not supposed to do it from this side. I was randomly pressing buttons when I was trying to get the course play to work. And some of the buttons, it does, even though I didn't save anything, it does remember, like, if you have that one up, it'll leave it up anyway. Uh, AI, that's not doing anything on there. Let me go this way. No, this way. See, there, on the, on the side, it's got it, but I thought it had the same with the animals. So you're... Oh, it's come all the way back over here now. I took, I, I, I took longer about that than I thought I was, and... This one is actually going where it's supposed to as well. It's going back onto the bit that I wanted it to go to, which is right there. It's going to go herring up across the field once more. If it can straighten itself out. It does seem to struggle a little bit with the fact that we've got articulated steer machines. And I do remember in FS17, I don't know if it was the AI vehicle extension or if it was the GPS mod, but one of them didn't work with articulated machines. It didn't like articulated tractors. I don't know why, so maybe it was this one, and this is kind of like a, a leftover um, bit from the fact that it didn't previously like it, but it's now been adjusted to like them. Could be. No idea. Okay, well, it, it seems to be doing well. We'll, let the, we'll, we'll, we'll leave our trusted worker to carry on, and we want to get these animals back. See, I, I don't have the animals on the side. I, like, in the little bar on the side there, so I, I can't actually see how many I'm carrying. I'm sure it's fine. And I'm going to go over here. Now, this is the next bit. We backed our truck out onto the road right here, and then we went across. So we know that we can't get into the other bit. So what I'm thinking now is that we've got some help. A man has jumped out. He stopped the traffic in both directions. And then I've gone over there like that, and I'm going to start backing in around this corner like this. The trouble is that that route right there, that's not backing properly. So I want to come over to here, and I want to start that. Uh, I want the back wheels turning in sooner than they were. I'm going to have to cut over like that. And then I want them turning in sharp. The idea is that I'm supposed to be going, like, there could be a ditch right here where I am. Yeah? So if there's a ditch there, that's, that's not helpful. I need to be able to back into that road right there, which, going around that corner, quite honestly, is a rather tricky maneuver anyway. But I wouldn't be able to do it. Mostly the idea is to do this without hitting any road signs, which we've done. I mean, yeah, I probably should have just gone up the other way and done it like that. But I wanted to try this way just once. I don't think there's any harm in that, is there? There's nothing wrong with taking the scenic route. Every now and then, it's something that a person needs to do. You need to just go off the beaten track just a little bit. Although, it's probably never a good idea to do that when you're driving a vehicle around. Um, lorries going off the beaten track and taking the scenic route. That There's that's something that causes a bit of problems. Yeah, the, 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 a bit of problems. That, that does cause a bit of trouble. A, a few problems in various towns and villages up and down the length and breadth of my country here in the UK uh, because they follow the GPS, but the GPS doesn't actually say to the driver, Oi, moron, this vehicle you're driving is 2.7 metres high and the bridge that we're barreling down the road towards without any indication whatsoever that you've seen all of the warning notices all over it saying that it's 1.2 metres high. Um, it's, we're, we're not going to fit, okay? You, you, you don't have your TomTom -tom or your whatever it is that you have, your, your GPS um, guidance system with the, the, the lovely magical voice that's purring in your ear like a kitten saying, Oi, moron, you won't fit. The bridge is too low. And too many drivers seem to think that if the GPS says, yes, go this way, then they can. And the GPS automatically knows that their lorry must be able to fit, else it wouldn't tell them to go that way. Now, how do I know all of this? How do I know that this, this must be happening? Well, I have made a couple of uh, assumptions on this. But the main reason that I'm pretty certain that it, it's happening is because I, I, I do see news stories where it says this. So, yeah, um, a thing happened 
where all of these, the, the, this lorry went and got stuck under this bridge. And you have a look at it, and you're like, okay, I can see the physics of why this lorry got stuck under this bridge, right? Physics dictate that that lorry is never in a million years going to fit under that bridge because, let's face it, the bridge comes to about that point right there. Somewhere level with the driver's empty skull. And apparently, the driver has looked at this. He's assessed it. He's obviously got a license to be able to drive. He's got his HGV license, so he's got to be reasonably competent. Because it's not an easy test to go and take. You do have to at least demonstrate that you can go forwards and backwards in the vehicle and you can do reversing and you know what mirrors are for and you know a bit about the highway code and stuff like that but apparently you don't need to know how tall your vehicle is because they look at this and they don't take it as my vehicle's not going to fit in there it's more along the lines of <laughs> okay challenge accepted and off they go and then they get their pay they get their picture in the newspaper uh, looking all sheepish and stupid and their lorry is firmly wedged underneath the bridge. And then they go away with points on their license and, and various other penalties. And all I'm left sort of struggling to comprehend is why. And there's one bridge in particular that is known for this here in the UK. And they've had more of these incidences than any other because their road happens to be a shortcut for the GPS system. GPS doesn't realise that the lorry won't fit and keeps telling the drivers to go under there. And the drivers keep listening to the GPS and not their own eyeballs. And so they go up to this bridge. And the bridge is literally festooned. Completely plastered in great big neon signs everywhere. Going up to it, there's a load of neon signs. Are you sure you can fit? And then there's these big yellow things all over it telling you how tall it is. And you still get lorries firmly wedged underneath the bridge. And you look at this and you think, did you set out this morning determined to lose your job? Is that why you did it? Because you didn't want your job anymore. The glamour of being a lorry driver has finally worn off. And you've decided that you want to do something different. And that is why you looked at this and just said, yep, challenge accepted. Or maybe you didn't even do that. Maybe you just looked at it and thought, you can't tell me what to do, mate. You can't tell me what to do. I go where I like. I'm a free spirit. And that's why you decided to drive into the bridge. So anyway... Don't be that person. That's all I'm saying is don't be that person. If you're going out on the road, know how high your load is. That's, that's all you need to do is know how high. Well, that's about all we've got time for in today's episode. So we're going to go and take a little bit of a break. We need to chill out on the beach, relax, and build up some strength. So while we're doing that... If you've enjoyed the episode, then could you please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.